go see our lawyer. And I went to see their lawyer in Bordentown, a Christian man. And he said to me, you get that out of their hands because they do that all the time. They sell it, get two, two or three payments, and then close up on you. And so I, I went to Allentown, building and loan. I had no problem at all, borrowing the money. And I called a lawyer and I said, well, get the deed because I have the money. He said, you have applied for the money. No, 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 no. I said, I have the promise of the money. And he got the deed. They, they wouldn't speak to me for a long time. <laughs> Remarkable. This dog, that dog right there. She, she had that in her arms going. I said, hey, where are you going with that? She said, well, I'm going to take it home. I said, because he lived right next door. I said, no, you aren't. That goes with the house. <laughs> uh, Pastor, when you first purchased the property, what was here? This was so bad, one fellow's place burned down here, and he brought the cattle in the front door downstairs to milk them. I bet other, you noticed the big, big mirror there, and there was no carpeting on the floor. He brought the, the cows in to milk them at night. That's how bad it was. And, uh, You're speaking of the downstairs? Downstairs where that mirror is on the first floor of the front door. And he brought the cows in there. There was nothing. There was, I guess there was probably, I don't know, of a room you could sleep in and it rained, you would, you'd get wet. This home was the only thing on the property at the time when you yeah. purchased it? Yeah. How old is the, is the house? 1783, somewhere around there. A man by the name of, uh, uh, what was his name? name was Reckless, and it was called Reckless Town. United States Senator Bullock bought it from him and changed it to Chesterfield. He's an admirer of Lord Chesterfield in England, and he made this Chesterfield, and it got a Chesterfield Township, see? And uh, he's the one that changed that. The, the ceilings down in the bed, down the first floor, if you ever look at them, I had a man come to look at them and uh, to carry out to uh, different things, but he said uh, if uh, that that whoever painted them, they knew it was a business because that is metallic base paint, the kind they use in the Sistine Chapel in Italy that kind of paint. It's a metallic base. Ours is more uh, vegetable based paint. That's metallic base, he said. You couldn't you couldn't get it painted like that. Again. And there's lots of places where the rain has come through and places where it leaked and like that. Pastor, tell us a little bit about you came here, you bought the property. When did you start and what did you what did you do first here? Well you did first there were some people who who didn't like what I what I what they did in the church in Trenton because I came out here and uh, so I re resigned from there but some of them followed me and uh, we had a group of people I said uh, uh, I bought, bought a thing that that building I bought from Fort Dix it was 16 foot wide and 64 foot long, so you only have a picture of it. Your picture of it only could seat that wide, and at the roof or the ceiling was eight foot because you didn't, you couldn't have a platform. So I stood with a thing and and, and preached to them. Then went wider and wider, and uh, they they delivered that here. And they said, "Why can't we have Sunday school?" I said, "Ah, I, I agree. You should have Sunday school if we don't buy Sunday school material that." They throw it all over the floor, and like that. If you need something to teach with, good. And all the money that comes through goes to missions. And they, and so it started, and it grew into Sunday school. Pretty soon, Sunday school teachers, Sunday school teachers, and uh, it grew. And I moved out eight foot, and moved again eight foot to take care of the people that are in there. Then built the Sunday school rooms on the side. 
So uh, that's how that got there. But I only paid three hundred dollars for the first one, Fort Dix, and we had to put it up. And on the inside was <laughs> cardboard, cardboard, and uh, what advertising, whatever. Like, like they took boxes and put them apart. But uh, anyway, that's uh, how we got what, what we have there. And and we built that. Then when we begin to have camps. Then we had the buildings down below. Then I had uh, then I had the uh, high school here. I got a picture of it in there. Beautiful picture of the high school that we had here. And there was those buildings down below. I built those buildings. Now about what year was was that built? Do you, do you recall? Oh. Let's see, Mark was in high school. I would say when we put the dining room on. I would say in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the progression of the, of the other ministries here. You're, you're, you're very proud in the Lord of the Bible Conference yeah. Center here. Yeah, when, we had the, when did that begin? The Bible Institute. The Bible Institute, yes. When did the Bible Institute begin? Well, what has happened, the, the John McCall, Dr. McCall, and I held many meetings with him he, down the shore. He, uh, I said to him one time, I said, Dr. McCall, if I put my Sunday school teachers together, would you come up and kind of give them a thing? That, there was a thing in Philadelphia called Evangelical uh, Teachers Meeting, something like that. I wanted him to just give something for the teachers. He came up here with a six-year curriculum, and I thought to myself, that isn't what I want. I just wanted him to talk to my Sunday school teachers, but then maybe I do want it. <laughs> so I, he had a whole thing, Central Jersey Bible Institute. I don't know. So we started. Now, about what year was that? Oh, uh, that would have to be, that would be in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And we started the Institute, and it's been going, well, 59. Mm -hmm. We started in 59, been going ever since, and we got pastors, many of them who have graduated from here. We have about a hundred students now on a Thursday night. They come they come from Keswick, they come up here to Bible school. So we teach eighteen subjects every Tuesday every Thursday night. That is six classes, three three subjects in each class. So six years they can graduate and there's a number of seminaries today that will take our credits. Down in Washington, down Jacksonville, take our credits. Wonderful. Accident. <laughs> Pastor, uh, you, you're you're very missions oriented. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like you to talk now about what's some of the things that you've done here that are special. Uh, what you think members of your congregation would like to know about the various ministries that are here. We talked about the Bible Conference, a little bit about the Kids Camp. Uh, uh, your emphasis for missions has always been, I think, probably... Uh, we had a thing called Chat and Chew, where that uh, they could go at night after meetings or during conference and buy ice cream cones and so on. But I said, whenever they give you change, don't take it, put it in there, because that's going to go to the missionaries. We sent our first missionary, and I say that would be probably in the 40s, to Africa, $50 a month full support. So we have 20 some, and our mission, our mission per year is 50 some thousand dollars now. Fifty thousand dollars a year is for missions. You have been on the radio, yeah. For how long? Well, the the daily is twenty six years, but I was on before that, just on Sundays. Just on Sundays, half hour on Sundays. But then Chuck Chuck Zelker, I told you he was a teenager here. He and his brother, his brother just wrote a book. On, uh, I started to tell you about it the other day, that big merchandise and 
a lot of good job. But uh, uh, Chuck, a, a fellow had that time in the morning of uh, 715, but he had it somewhere in Canada. Anyway, he gave it up. And so Chuck called me and asked me if I would take it. And I said to Chuck, well, you know, Chuck, I don't like to make tapes when I have to, no, I do it. But if you get me live, fix it up so I can do it live, I'll take it. So I had to go to Puerto Rico for a board meeting on the mission there. When I come home, he had it all set up. Then we were all set to do it. A fella came out, we got it all lined up on a, on a night before Christmas. We got, because uh, we got it all set up. I got up in the morning. We're going to do the first broadcast, and all the tubes were turning, smoking, and all that. So I called him. I said, "I can't. I can't do anything. Could you do it over the telephone?" So sure, I can do it over the telephone. So I came here to the kitchen table, and I did it over the telephone, and I did it for I don't know, some time, just over over the telephone every Sunday. But I, and I did uh, no. Uh, Sunday I did, but uh, every day, I did that every day. Then uh, Central Baptist had some stuff over, transistor and so on. I bought them from them and, and put the aerial up here, and then I do it like I did this morning. I've been doing that for 26 years. We didn't talk about this. You just inadvertently mentioned it, but you you were preaching in the jail for 20, would you, when, when? I've reached a county jail on Broad Street in Trenton. When, when? On Sundays. When? For 20 years you did that? Yeah. Every every Sunday or every once every a month? Every Sunday we went until it got so bad the jailers couldn't take care of the people anymore. They okay. Them, you know, so. I had one convert. I said, was that worth it? Yes. 20 years. And this man, See, I wasn't allowed to deal with a man unless they sent for it. So they called me and said, this man wants to talk to you. Killed a man in Bordentown. He came there to rob a store, and the owner of the store got the best of him, picked up a rod and killed him. So he's there. He heard me. Then I went up and talked with him outside the jail, out in a room on the side, in front of a table. And I led him to the Lord. He said to me, he said, I have a robe, I had a robe buttons that long from a, from a church that gave me for faithful attendance to, but I never heard what you said in there. And I led him to the Lord. I don't know what he got life in prison or what. Would you have lived on the earth since 1900? Yeah. If you could just summarize the times we live in now and what advice you could convey to those who will be viewing this, this tape. Of course, my main gripe is when they took the Bibles out of the schools. They robbed that generation, another generation, of what they could have learned. I hated school and I went to school, but I always remember, and I was not in a Christian home or anything, I had a, a teacher by the name of Hire or something like that, one by the name of Bush. And I had no Bible at home or nothing, but those two teachers, I remember one thing about them. Every morning they read out of the Bible, and uh, each one of them did different, different grades. That, those two teachers I remember. Now I wasn't in a Christian home, and I wasn't in the Bible, but they did something for me. See that I always remember. When we took that out, and now the pastor tells they're trying to get uh, one through now, or whether they did, did or didn't, that uh, you're not allowed to talk about God where you work or have a Bible where you work. Now, what we, when we've taken the Bible out of the hands of people, which is the Word of God, then we destroyed that people. 
See, we go to 